Hi everyone, it's Alice Shattuck of Tom Shattuck's Burn Barrel here. You can see I'm in the big chair today running my own show. That's because June 11th, you're going to be able to find me on my very own podcast. That's right, starting Friday, June 11th, I will be launching the 1570 Project where I'm going to talk to tons of awesome guests about everything from campaign finance, election fraud, the state of the music industry, Taylor Swift, whatever topics I find interesting. So you can hear that again starting this Friday, June 11th. So make sure you subscribe on iTunes or YouTube or wherever you like to listen to make sure you don't miss the first episode. They wanted to build this uh, in when I first was assembling them. Mm-hmm. They wanted to build a, a congregate living place for retarded children. Americans get very upset when our nation is accused of war crimes, but I'm sorry to break this to you. Our nation has done some pretty awful things abroad, and we have to be able to talk about them. Take the Korean War. Does the No-Gun Knee Massacre in 1950, in which U.S. forces are accused of deliberately firing on and killing hundreds of refugees? Like, if you, like, gender and sexuality is such a broad spectrum, to only exist on one extreme of it doesn't make any sense. Especially if you're both extremes, you know? Like, it could happen, but... Mm. Here's your reminder that fat phobia is rooted in racism. In a weekend interview, Vladimir Putin laughed at the suggestion that you had called him a killer. What do you say to Vladimir Putin? <laughs> to answer the first question, <laughs> I'm laughing too. The actually, I. Uh... Well, look, I mean, he has made clear that. Uh, uh... Really? Mm hmm. The answer is, I believe he has in the past essentially acknowledged that he was, uh, there are certain things that he would do or did do. Yeah, right. Okay, so that is Joe Biden uh, currently in Europe. That was So Joe glad Biden. the adults are in charge again, two, aren't you, Tom? To uh, Alice. What? You're so sweet. <laughs> Why am I because, sweet? Because <laughs> yeah, you, you threw a little bomb there. And you didn't have 100% con- confidence in it <laughs> when you did. <laughs> but uh, that is Joe Biden. We're going to get back to you in a second. That is Joe Biden today. Um, uh, for a question from Jeff Zeleny about Putin and where he takes uh, 18 seconds to buffer while trying to answer the question. Okay, what were you saying about the adults being in charge Fine. now? You, Miss, you go Miss, back to your... Miss Throwdown. <laughs> Why don't you go, go ahead, back to queen. yours? <laughs> so glad the adults are back. Go ahead. That's all. That's all I had to say. I'm done now. <laughs> all right. So, uh, so Alice, we just played the promo for the 1570 project. We did. I think indeed. it would have been smarter had we played it before the show came out for the first time. But that, so it's out there. Mm-hmm. Now, there, how many episodes? There are two episodes. Have, what have the episodes done, Alice? They, they have dropped. They've dropped, good. <laughs> so there's two episodes. There's two episodes. That's a 1570 Project. 1570 Project. People should go on iTunes and listen to it. I haven't, I've heard some of one. I haven't heard all of one, um, but I haven't heard any of the second one. But I heard the one in Taylor Swift, and it's very interesting. Inside mm-hmm. baseball stuff about how record companies work and how her own deal with their record company and how she got out of it and then trying to put the screws to them and and now her team's uh, handling her own music and I like to say it's nice to have the adults back in, mm-hmm. the, in the Taylor Swift's record company uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like your shirt I think that it's sh- that I think you look lovely mm-hmm. thank but, you thank you I had to convince you to maybe zip up a little bit I think it's fair to say. Sure, I can zip up more. No, Alice, <laughs> I want you to feel free. This is a safe space for you. I want you to feel comfortable to bear I think it's much. at a good height right now. I'm going to leave it as it is. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll ask uh, gentlemen and ladies, you may uh, sound off on how she looks. That is a great shirt, by the way. I got that from the Super Bowl. That's the... Um, Super Bowl, which one? 51. That's the one in Arizona that they won with... Um, what's his name in the end zone? All right, so... There's a lot to get to. Remind me, Alice, before we get too far, I've got to play another under the tree of the Burn Barrel podcast production family mm-hmm. is uh, Jane Nolan and Catherine. What's Catherine's last name? Caroline. Caroline. Sorry, Caroline. She's not going to listen anyway. Caroline Moss. 
Caroline, and Jane is a lawyer. Caroline is a scientist, and they've got a true crimes podcast that we'll tell you about as well. It's pretty cool. They're sick people, both of them. I can't believe that they're into this because these are the mo it's the most disturbing, grisly violence I've ever heard of. And right. and they're just and they're all into that's fine. But if you're into that, and you enjoy young women uh, telling you about gruesome crimes, yeah. There's a um. fetish for that, probably, guys, you <laughs> sickos. But also, uh, as of now I have, Alice, on my calendar, I show it as being June 14th. We forgot that June 11th was the one-year anniversary of the Burn Barrel podcast. So just about a year ago, and a couple of days ago, the first ever Burn Barrel podcast happened, Alice, mm -hmm. uh, after being cajoled by you. I was going to hold off and do it properly yeah I, there never would have been a burn barrel podcast if not for tom shaddock's nagging wife alice well i don't know you get some credit there but um i actually had to do it at one point and also i was not going to do one daily because you know why do one daily but uh the craziness has not taken a day off so really uh, either have we but here's mm -hmm. what it sounded like just about a year ago you tell me alice if you hear a difference <laughs> Other than the fact that the closing song is what's the opening song. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Tom Shattuck's Burn Barrel. You know, I wasn't going to do this tonight. I wasn't going to do this for a while. I was, um, I was thinking that maybe I would hold off on on the podcast stuff for a bit. Um, just a lot. Obviously, I'm busy. I work at a newspaper and um, a couple of newspapers, really, here in uh, Massachusetts. I'm now a stimmy queen. Mm -hmm. I work at zero newspapers, and I would say that is a good thing. And, um, you know, it's been crazy. So there's been all sorts of stuff going on. We're trying to, you know, still promote the paper while covering all the pro covering all the um, coronavirus stuff. And now, of course, the protests and the riots and this and that. And, uh, you know, so doing that just means that, you know, it never ends. You know, you're, you're always plugged into the news cycle. And you're always um, looking around. You know, I can't stop now. I mean, I can't, uh, you know, there's always something that comes across the transom. And, uh, you know, you got to talk about it and you got to write about it and got to, you know, for the hard news stuff. That was low energy, Tom. My goodness. Come on. Wake up. So, anyway, that was uh, last year when we first started this baby out. I do go on to talk about Chaz, which was a new thing back mm -hmm. then. And some uh, a few other things, but that was back then. I think it, is the volume adequate, Alice, right now for this. It's okay on my end. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, you know, it is what it is, right? Right. It's fine. Uh, okay, that is fine. Okay. Um, but it's, so that was then, uh, and it um, it's uh, thank you everybody for those who were in on the ground floor and everybody else who has joined us and. Uh, we really appreciate it, and now I will shut up and get to what we're here for. So, yeah, the Biden today, I'm not one of these people who's worried that Putin's going to, you know, suddenly win Alaska back in negotiations <laughs> while Biden is mouth-breathing. I don't think that's, that's going to happen. It's not a great look to have a... It, it, he is uh, ailing a little bit. Biden is is listing here, and it's not it's not great. It's not great. It um it just makes people feel uncomfortable, and they should because at times he's fine. At times he's not fine, and during this question, he's not fine. Mm -hmm. And I understand that Trump was a jerk and was uh you know had somebody in a, a like a full Nelson la four years ago when he did his NATO G seven thing, but you also, but he wasn't he wasn't missing a fastball that he once had well right and i think you know you said you know we're not worried putin's gonna take alaska back well no but i do think that uh if i were like our troops or contractors who were in a benghazi like situation i would be a little concerned that biden would not necessarily have my back when the 3 a.m phone call came you know well i think biden didn't have their back when it came then <laughs> As well, right, fact. or Clinton or whoever was supposed to be right. manning the phone line at that point well, in nobody. time. Yeah. But, you know, I think that I think that with Trump, you certainly if you were like Putin or if you were whatever militants in Libya, whoever it is, 
that when you're thinking about attacking American forces, when Trump's there, you know that, like, anything could happen. Like, yes. a nuke could fall on you if you attack Americans at three in the morning. You just don't know with Trump. Like, he's a, he's awake, he's alert, and he wants to get you back if you come after the USA. Right? Yes. With Biden, I don't think that, like, deterrent is there. And I think that our enemies know it's not there. Well, we'll see. We'll see exactly what happens. But this was, so here's the question and answer. Remember, Biden had a couple weeks ago said, uh, called Putin a killer. Mm -hmm. Was really talking tough about him. So he was asked about that by Jeff Zeleny. In a weekend interview, Vladimir Putin laughed at the suggestion that you had called him a killer. Is that still your belief, sir, that he is a killer? And I'll continue the trend, if you don't mind, of asking a second question. Do you believe if he does agree to cooperate, then what kind of a challenge do you find yourself in? How would you ever trust him? And if Ronald... That heavy breathing is Biden breathing. That is scary. Reagan said, trust but verify. What do you say to Vladimir Putin? (laughs) Answer the first question? (laughs) I'm laughing, too. They actually... uh, well, look, I mean, he has made clear that uh, uh, <laughs> Hello? Anybody? the answer is, I believe he is in the past essentially acknowledged that he was uh, there are certain things that he would do or did do. But look, um, when I was asked that question on air, I answered it honestly, but it's not much of a I, I, I don't think it matters a whole lot in terms of this next meeting we're about to have. The second question was. Rela- Be- I'd verify first and then trust. In other words, everything would have to be shown to be actually occurring. It's not about, uh, you know, uh, uh, trusting. It's about. Agreeing, you know, when we uh, when you write uh, treaties with your adversaries, you don't say I trust you. You say this is what I expect. And if you violate the agreement you made, then we the, the quote the treaties off the agreements off. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, that President Putin concludes that there is some interest in terms of his own interest in so he's changing he's getting there. He's getting there. It's he's moving mm-hmm. slowly, and there's no doubt that he is. Uh, is at at times he drops the ball and isn't quite sure what the hell is going on. And, uh, yeah. And shuts down. So that that gap in there is a, uh, it should be concerning. But uh, talk about was it you earlier who said to talk about wanting to get Kamala to come to Europe for the first time? Yeah. That's the way. Oh, you. That's right, because he was missing for two and a half hours today. Right. He was more than two hours late to his own press conference. Right. Which is uh, an odd thing. I've got to say. Mm-hmm. But uh, that is where we are. We'll see what happens with Putin. When does he meet with him? Is it? Uh, I don't know. He, uh, you know what? <laughs> Hell with it then. <laughs> what, are, what are you thinking about then, Alice? <laughs> I'm seeing the video that you posted on Twitter. And? And, well, you said Tom Can instead of Tom Cam. Oh, really? Yeah. But well, all. maybe Can is more uh, appropriate <laughs> in that particular picture. <laughs> For a reason that is uh, below the dignity of this podcast, Alice. At Burn Barrel Pod. That's the Twitter if you want to see what yeah. we're talking about. Mm-hmm. But Paul, uh, I like your... Tom is undignified. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, speaking of undignified, isn't it great that Biden's out there. He's two and a half hours late. He's lost shuffling somewhere, mm-hmm. somewhere around Europe. And at the same time, Chuck Schumer, who's 104 years old, is the Senate Majority Leader. Uh, but it, he, he is fully um in control of his faculties but unfortunately for him that's not a good thing they wanted to build a uh, in when i first was assemblyman mm-hmm. they wanted to build a, a congregate living place for retarded children mm-hmm. the whole neighborhood was against it these are harmless kids they just needed right. some help <laughs> ah you know i don't <laughs> that's a slur now you can't say that <laughs> Somebody come get Chuck. God knows what they called that bill back then. Uh, but uh, 
But who knows? Who knows? But then again, Schumer, he may be out of trouble soon because it's possible unless Trump destroys every Senate candidate for 2022. Uh, and that is possible, too. What's happening is Trump is picking favorites, which we've seen historically can be problematic. Because if he's just simply picking the most Trumpy, Trumpy person to endorse in states, there may be some whack jobs included in there, mm -hmm. and we may lose seats that we should otherwise win. We'll see what happens. But if Trump does, uh, if, if the Republicans do win back the Senate, then we could find ourselves once again in a situation where Joe Biden is nominating a Supreme, Supreme Court, uh, is, is picking a, choosing a Supreme Court nominee. And Hugh Hewitt, nice guy, mm -hmm. uh, actually asked Mitch McConnell about this and said, hey, if this happens, you get the Senate back in 2024, will you, um, are you going to pull the same thing where you don't, you know, uh, uh, even the sit uh, sit the person for hearings. Would the rule that you applied in 2016 to the Scalia vacancy apply in 2024 to any vacancy that occurred then? Well, I think in the middle of a presidential election, if you have a Senate of the opposite party of the president, you have to go back to the 1880s to find the last time a vacancy was filled. So I think it's highly unlikely. In fact, no, I don't think... Uh, Either party, if it controlled, if it were different from the president, would confirm a Supreme Court nominee in the middle of, a, of an election. That, uh, what was different in 2020 was we were of the same party as the Correct. president. And that's why we went ahead with it. If you regain the... So there you go. So McConnell says, yeah, I'll do it again. Mm -hmm. Even if it's, you know, 2023, he'll do it. Can you imagine... Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. that's I can't not, imagine. <laughs> that's not fair. Oh, my God. That's rightfully Joe Biden's guy. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how the rules go. And, you know, I'm sorry. I thought that McConnell should have sat Merrick Garland last time. Not or, sat not him. Not sat him, but, but uh, given him a vote. for a hearing anyway. Make, make the right. wimpy senators do an up or down vote on him. He was not going to be on the Supreme Court either way. They would have voted right. down every nominee Barack Obama sent them. Until the next president was in office, period, the end. Right. That just would have been it. But I, I do think they should have voted on Merrick Garland. I totally agree. And I do think that when when he, he did sit somebody for RBG's seat, mm -hmm. um, that that was totally appropriate because they had the majority. Of course they're going to yeah. nominate and, and uh, vote for judges on the Supreme Court. No problem with that whatsoever. I don't really have a problem with... Mitch McConnell, I think he's probably one of the people doing his job. I understand why the left would hate him. I get it. Mm -hmm. If he's your enemy and he looks like that and he talks like that and he's, <laughs> he's blocking all your guys' stuff, you really would be peeved at him. But um, but he is somebody, by all accounts, that respects – he's who only wants to be Senate Majority Leader and respects um, the um, – he he likes being a statesman. Mm -hmm. That's what he wants to do. Um, so we'll see. But it is interesting because, like you said yesterday, that uh, they are Biden is getting pressure to tell Breyer to take a hike. It is Breyer, right? Is mm -hmm. he, he yeah, they want Breyer to retire now because they want time to seat somebody before they lose the Senate majority, which could very very easily happen uh, next at the end of next year. So right. something that uh, that Ginsburg did not do, which which bit them in the ass right exactly and um you know i i've read speculation that you know that ginsburg didn't want to be replaced by obama because you know he wasn't really her type of democrat ideologically that she would have rather been replaced by a more kind of establishment person like a clinton who's sort of this more old school type of democrat and that she on purpose screwed obama thinking clinton was going to be the next president and she wasn't you know, so but I mean, that's speculation. Nobody knows that for sure. But, um, you know, I think a lot of people thought Hillary Clinton was going to be the next president and so didn't take it seriously. But I think, you know, once bitten, twice shy, the Democrats are nervous now that um, that, you know, Ron DeSantis is going to get to name Breyer's replacement if they don't do something soon and then they're going to be they're going to be down to like what is it now it's technically 6-3 right now not that they the Supreme Court doesn't necessarily go along ideological lines that often but um 
But if it became 7-2, they'd really start to have some problems with some of their favorite pet projects to try and get through the Supreme Court because they can't pass them in the legislature. Oh, well. So that is... Uh, wait, wait, I'm... Did I my my volume drop? I don't hello, know. hello, hello, hello. I'm seeing your bars. Are go. you sure? Yeah. I feel like I'm not really seeing me strong. Anyway, I'm gonna touch this thing here. Hello, hello, hello. That seems louder, but you're also yelling, so it's hard for me to tell. Check one two. Check one two. That's louder. Hmm. Something seems off. Anyway, um, so it, I'll set up this thing um with. This, because this is tough for me to explain, with the In the Heights crew, what I'm seeing here. So what mm -hmm. I have is there's a, there's a movie called In the Heights, right? Mm -hmm. And it's based on a musical by Lin Manuel Miranda. Oh, so Jesus. this is the Hamilton guy. So this is all liberal and progressive people that are involved in this project. It's a movie. It's a musical. It's set in, um, in Washington Heights, in Manhattan. And it's, which I guess is a very, um, ethnically diverse, it's, it's a very diverse Latino. community, right. a lot of Dominicans in Washington Heights. Um, but so it's, it's a musical that takes place over three days. It's, you know, very Lin-Manuel Miranda and it's directed by John Chu who did Crazy Rich Asians. So this is like diverse people writing it, diverse people directing it diverse people in it but um the left is still concerned that it was not diverse enough okay and so what i'm seeing here is is this this woman's show yeah and then... this is her show she's interviewing director john chu okay. about the so, musical so it starts yeah. with a scene a little musical scene for a few seconds mm -hmm. of them doing some dance in the street the late night shit tastes bees and rice It's not gonna shave ice I ain't gonna say it twice Turn up the street lights We taking the flight to a couple of days in the life for what it's like In Washington Heights Congratulations Alright, now who's this interview? Do you know her? Um, I don't know who the interviewer is. Okay, so yeah. this interviewer has a, has a vlog, a video log, or, or a YouTube show, whatever She's talking to John Chu here. Mm -hmm. She congratulates him, as you've just heard, uh, but then takes a radical turn. It's on In the Heights. It was a lovely musical. But as a black woman of Cuban descent, specifically from New York City, it would be remiss of me to not acknowledge the fact that most of your principal actors were light-skinned or white-passing Latinx people. What is white passing? It means that they could pass for white in the imaginary oh, in no. the imaginary dystopia where the you know Trump runs everything where white people have special privileges. Um, they could pass for white to get through. Society. So they're inadequately yeah. black. Mm -hmm. Okay, and she said they're Latinx people, which is a they're, term that very few Latinos acknowledge or use. Right. So, but they're mostly, oh, term. but too many of the leads, there's lots of like diverse backup, more like more darker skinned backup dancers, but the leads are too light and white passing. I see. Okay. And that is bad because. So they're like Latinx people that like could pass for white possibly. Okay. So with that, what are your thoughts on the lack of black Latinx people represented in your film. Yeah, I mean, I think that that was something uh, we talked about and um, and I needed to be educated about. Oh, God, shut <laughs> up. Shut up. Immediately starts reading the prison speech. <laughs> I needed to be educated about it. I needed to put the work in to make sure that there were more safer black spaces in the... There's you, also you, been you, rumors. You cowardly, spineless, wimp rumors. There's also been rumors that there... Some of the actors in it have said that at the castings, there were darker people there, too. Right, right. That they didn't cast. Well, it, that was said. I may have extracted that when oh. the actor said that. But yes, that there were darker people there. And he says something unforgivable. Of course. In the end, you know, when we were looking at the cast, we tried to get the people who were best for those roles. And Whoa! <laughs> no, 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 no. You yeah. don't. What is this crap? No, no, no. <laughs> this is not Best. a meritocracy. Best for this isn't about the 
the for, formidability of somebody's acting skills. This mm -hmm. is not about chops. This is not about putting on a theatrical production, an effective one. No, 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 no. All that matters is that there needed to be darker people, mm -hmm. not white passing people. White certainly. passing Latinx people. Even if they're the best actors to have ever, ever, mm -hmm. you know, jumped on stage. Doesn't matter. White passing is no good. This is not, this is a parade of colors, first and foremost. Second, sure, there's a story involved. <laughs> but is am I wrong? That's the, that's their attitude. And they right. know that because they're already dealing with people who opted in to wokeism and telling woke stories and whatever that that they're gonna you know just sit here and be in the hostage video because you realize now alice for the mm -hmm. five straight nights i've been watching documentaries on the french revolution <laughs> yes and now all sorts of different ones as well mm -hmm. and, uh, unfortunately there were some white passing uh, reactors <laughs> in it which i didn't like um but so I am so used to now seeing every person who's brought up historical person suddenly get dragged to the guillotine <laughs> that I, I I can't get it off my mind. In my mind, John Chu now has been dragged to the guillotine. Guillotine. I'm not. No, Alice. <laughs> no. No. It was us who went on Normandy Beach. It wasn't them who went to, uh, you know, Long Beach to save us. It's guillotine till the French do something really good. <laughs> um, but so, and it used to be guillotine when I was a kid before people started being a holes. I always learned a guillotine. No, it's not guillotine, Alice, because we're not in Paris. No. <laughs> so, uh, so, okay, so that's it. So that's, so that's what's happening. John Chu is getting his rear end chewed right now mm -hmm. because he inadequately, the people weren't dark enough in this movie. Specifically, and we saw a lot of people, people like Daphne or Dasha. But I hear you on, um, you know, trying to fill those cast members with darker skin. I think that's that's I think that's a a a, a, a really good conversation to have. Something that we should be all be talking about. I didn't realize. Hey, whoa, who's this all be? <laughs> You're the one who opted in and made the movie. Chew, leave me out of it. I'm not having this conversation until making this movie that I... It's one of I, the actors. This is one of the actors who's white passing who didn't realize... Now Now she's stabbing Chu. <laughs> this is so French Revolution, it's incredible. She's now saying, yeah, I didn't know until I finished it that, that everybody is kind of not black enough in this. I didn't really get to see myself or people that look like my siblings that are darker than me. On she doesn't get to see herself portrayed in this even though she's in it. <laughs> Okay. And like, since we're literally just talking about how dark they are at this point, because they're already the right ethnic background, right? They mm -hmm. already, like, the the people who made this movie thought they were doing it right because the movie is about Latinx people and they cast Latinx people. Little did they know they were still running afoul because the melanin count was not high enough on the right. <laughs> on the actors. And... I mean, like, they could have just sent them to the tanning booth. Like, is that appropriation? I don't know. But they're already the right ethnic background. So, like, are they allowed to just tan more and then they'll be less white passing? I don't I even am, know what the rules are at this point. This is, I like, such a subtle... I am away from those <laughs> questions like those, Alice. I don't know. All I know is that as, it's, as it stands now, they're white passing. But, like, I feel like we're, like, holding up Pantone charts to people now. This is so weird. Like, I thought that this wasn't what we were supposed to do in America. But I feel like I have a new one of these every week. I, like, discover a totally new rabbit hole of crazy to go down of, like, the weird ways you can screw up with this critical race stuff. Right. Well, and it doesn't even matter. She, this young <laughs> actress, didn't see herself portrayed in this. <laughs> And she's white the passing, I think. And she couldn't even get a white passing version of herself represented in this. <laughs> On screen. And I didn't realize how much that affected the limitations that I put on myself. I love how the learning process, the putting in the work <laughs> process, has like really cool kind of urban jazzy thoughtful music in the mm -hmm. background. This yeah. whole experience here of what is really an interrogation 
right, and uh, replete with accusations mm -hmm. and judgment, has dun, 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 <laughs> yeah. thoughtful. Struggle urban. sessions are fun, kids. It's incredible. Being someone who wanted to be an artist and be an actress and you know even be in 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 the Latin music industry, uh, being Afro Latina. I She's begging for her life in front of the judge and the jury, begging for her life. Mm -hmm. You want to see black people in the oh, heights. You want to see Afro Panamanians. Afro Panamanians? Um, I guess that's from Panama. Okay. Black Cubans, black Dominicans. You know, that's what we want to see. And that's what, you know, we were yearning for and hoping for. I hope that at least. Uh... Oh, poor. She's back for more. From another. Uh... But what's incredible to me about the actress, the first actress who was there, is it's like. She's literally a movie star who's in a big movie and claiming that she's not being re people who look like her aren't being represented in the movie and that because yes. people who look like her aren't being represented in the movie that she's literally in mm -hmm. she's been putting limitations on herself even though she's literally in the movie like right. what limitations are on you like nothing It's even better than that Alice is that this is the new version of a movie promotion campaign <laughs> well yeah because i think it was talk about how inadequate you were with race and color i think it hasn't That's been doing it. quite as well as they it's, wanted it's it to not do. about it's not about uh, you know oh uh, john did his own stunts those days are gone you know mm -hmm. yeah working with rick was fun on the set he'd always be a practical joker no no no, no. this is a new promotion get on there and uh, declare your fealty to the cause declare your inadequacies, mm -hmm. you know, and throw yourselves in front of this tribunal of this lady here who's going to castigate you and yell at you, but we'll have positive music playing. So, yeah, it's good. It's, go out and see the movie. <laughs> and you notice, you know, the lack of black people that's just not black <laughs> enough. And why don't they should just turn the sound off in the movie? There's no reason. <laughs> right? Yeah, you can tell everybody's races without having the sound on. Although maybe they should close caption it for the visually impaired. Now a person who's uh he appears to maybe have some Afro descent, but he could he's pretty can much white passing impaired? actually. Can they see closed captions? Or like uh I guess not closed captions then, I guess um what's it called when they talk? They have a description text going. I don't know. They do uh, that. I don't uh, like what's going on with you here, Chuck <laughs> Schumer. I was just suggesting. No, but that's a thing now that Some they do. Sick joke. Put closed captions on. So well, no, but impaired. what they do. Well, no, but what they do is like, for example, do you ever see this now? Like woke people when they're on Twitter, when they have an image, they add alt text or somebody will come along and like, so like you should add alt text to your image to make sure that like the visually impaired can know what you're posting. If that's like the whole of your post and they'll like describe out the whole thing, like can you describe the alt meme. Text on an image yeah, in, they give you up to in, a thousand characters of alt text in Twitter. Yeah. Oh, that's so you too should good. be using it for the visually impaired so because they that. can't see your image. You need to describe the whole image, what it is, and explain the joke that's in it or whatever. Oh, so that you, so that the visually impaired aren't so missing their out. Can read it other, to them. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise you're able. List. I hope you're using alt text. Uh, that encourages more people to. What does the alt text for this movie read? <laughs> it just tells you the races of everybody on the screen, but then they're out of time to tell you what else young, is happening. Young Asian person supposed to be protected right now more than ever, being accosted by woman for inadequately uh, staffing movie uh, with dark enough people. He grovels to her. She does not relent her attack. Uh, it, <laughs> the leading actress then knifes him. So, uh, Tell more stories and get out there and do it right then. There is a long history of colorism and pigmentocracy. In okay, the second one, pig. Pigmentocracy. Pig hypocrisy. <laughs> Just like uh, Pigment, Charlotte's Web. Pigmentocracy. Okay. So that's like uh, choosing the leadership of the country on the basis of pigment level. <laughs> <laughs> in latin america and with that what would you say to folks who say that in the heights privileges white passing and light-skinned latinx people i would say that that's a fair conversation to have oh god this guy there's nothing left of him just leave him alone <laughs> he's got no more blood to spill okay poor dude 
It's like that was he's got to like look at his uh, his like uh, his talent agents or I'm sorry his PR person be like that's what you do now you feed me to those people. <laughs> How can he grovel anymore? You know what, though? I just don't understand. It's like, so why don't these people go make movies then? Oh, if they're so smart. These people. Mm. I don't mean. I mean, I. <sighs> Maybe on the 1570 project, you throw around <laughs> slurs like I that. Mean, else, no, here. it's not. That's not a slur. I'm saying not. Uh, you know what I mean. That's not fair. <laughs> why don't the people who are so critical of this go make movies? Is that better? Well, because one of the people being critical of this is John Chu, and his <laughs> cast. They're they're caught. He's caught in a pretzel. It, no, it can't be undone. Sorry. <laughs> Listen, we're not going to get everything right in uh in a movie. He got uh, slammed for saying that. Yeah. We're not going to get everything. Uh huh. Mm hmm. We got all the white passing people right. Apparently, <laughs> like I can't get a chance on this. But all white uh, snowflake movie uh, we tried our best on all fronts of it i do think there's something to be said about sharing in experiences and me never trying to say i knew i know what i'm doing but to just give room to everybody to speak up about what we're doing at that moment and i'll just add like this i hope that this is cracking that glass ceiling because i do hope to see my brothers and sisters that are darker than me lead these movies Oh, man, that's another knife to John Chu. You know what, Alice, when I make my directorial debut for a motion picture, mm -hmm. um, and I begin my press tour, just to, uh, hand me a pistol so I could just blow my head off after the first question instead of having to grovel and crawl and apologize for making a movie that employed uh, minorities in the black and brown community. I am I thought that was the right thing to do, but no, nope. nope. apparently not. The rules changed again. Your Rules colorism all... caught you off right. guard. You had internalized colorism that you didn't even realize that and you had. pigmentalian, Alice. <laughs> Pigmentocracy. And you know what's going to happen if the next movie he makes next year mm -hmm. is full of very, very black pigmented black people? And she reviews it? What's going to happen then? <laughs> There's going to be some other problem with yes, that. Yes, that's <laughs> right. The rules will have changed without him getting the memo. <laughs> and he's going to have to grovel and apologize again and say these are conversations we should have. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I can't do everything perfect, and that is life. These people are nuts. <laughs> These people, huh? I learned what are you from, trying to say? What are you. you trying to say? I learned it from you, Alice. I learned it from uh, you. There's landmines everywhere. Landmines everywhere. Let's go somewhere safer. You know what? One of the places I go, Alice, to change the subject, to think about, um, um, about uh, other sad and dark realities in our world, but which are not based on race generally, Sad and what the, reality? It's the extreme what? Sad and what realities? I don't know. I, I made have invented. You said word. sad and dark. Ooh, Alice. That's what you said. You I'm questioning it. your colorism over no, there. No, you're no, 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 no. You think that you're um, black passing, which is <laughs> like Rachel Dolezal, which is <laughs> I don't yes, think. yes, you did. <laughs> you do indeed, and you're not okay. <laughs> Uh, but uh, one of the places I go to escape is this new podular cast. Hi, baddies. I'm Jane. And I'm Caroline. And get ready for the ride of your life with Murder, Murder on, on the Millennial, Millennial Express. Express. I'm a criminal prosecutor. And I'm a scientist. And we'll be breaking down a new true crime case each week. Episodes start dropping June 19th weekly. Find us on social media before then at at MontmePod on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, and email us at MontmePod at gmail.com, or find us online at MontmePod.com. Here we go. <clears throat> Jane Nolan. Caroline. Wasp. Wasp. No, wasp. She is a wasp, though. But, um... So, uh, yes, and so I've heard, I'm the producer, officially. Alice is the producer of the Murder on the Millennial Express podcast. It is good. If you're into that stuff, if you're a sick person who likes um, true crime, then you're going to like it. Because these two are not at all, the where they should be shuddering and things, they're just joyful and gleeful that's during not, the whole thing. That, sounds, that's because, that makes them sound evil. Because I believe they're not, one of them. They're against one, the crime. One listener you guys. told me that one of them once killed a man. But I'm not saying that that happened. But it's a, it's a cool show. And they are interesting. This promo here, I would start right with, right, not yet. I would start with, I'm a lawyer, 
or I'm a prosecutor. She said prosecutor. She said I'm a lawyer. Because right when she says it, the like the or maybe she said uh, the crime show guitar plays. Hi, baddies. I'm Jane and I'm Caroline, and get ready for the ride of your life with Murder, Murder on, on the, the Millennial, Millennial Express. Express. We're getting to that, obviously. <laughs> they like that. But then it they start, like it that. Starts... That makes them happy. Then it starts right here. I'm a criminal prosecutor, and I'm a scientist, and we'll be breaking down a new true crime case each week. Episodes start dropping June 19th weekly. Find us on social media before then at at MotmePod on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, and email us at MotmePod at gmail.com, or find us online at MotmePod.com. I do like the song, and I do think that the, that people will dig that stuff. If you're into true crime stuff, I've heard way too much of it because they do what I hear at the house. and But they're very funny about it, i got to say. So check that out. Check out the 1570 Project. Uh, where Alice is going to have a guest named Hannah on the next uh, edition. <laughs> Not Somebody true. Who is, False advertising. Who she has said is, a, is, is going to be an advocate for me, and I don't see why. Here's your reminder that fat phobia is rooted in racism. As always, if you haven't read... How do you even start? This is an <laughs> idiot, idiot on TikTok who is uh, calorically challenged, we can say, right? I guess so. Who's, your words. Who's now tethered <clears throat> my people's cause... Fat phobia mm-hmm. to the racial uh, justice movement. So maybe you need to have John Chu here on the Burn Barrel podcast Ooh. and ask him why, given fat phobia's long history of connection to white supremacy, he cast so few um, fat. Almost leads everybody in, in that the movie. dance scene was thin passing. Almost everybody. Yeah, That's exactly right. Hannah, you take need- it away. Here's your um. She's speaking, Alice. Sorry. Okay. Here's your reminder that fat phobia is rooted in racism. As always, if you haven't read this book, go do that. Do you happen to recall what idiotic book this idiot is reading? Um, I, it was something about being fat and white supremacy. I'm sure if you Google the terms together, you can find it. Needless to say, this in all books is dumb. The main thing to understand is that for the last 300-ish years, white folks have been marketing fatness as a black trait. And this is regardless of whether or not black people individually were... I would like to look into the veracity (laughs) of that. It's it's 1724. What do you do, good sir? Well, I market fat and the fatness as a black trait. (laughs) Are you sure that's a productive and a fruitful uh, commodity to be uh, dealing in in this year, considering we're barely getting by here? Yes, that's what I do. I market uh, fatness as a black trait. There's a huge audience for it. There's a huge market for it. You'll see. It's going to sweep the nation. Can you imagine? What is wrong with you, Alice? <laughs> Can you imagine this thing? I'm sorry, Hannah says... For we've been for three hundred years marketing fatness as a black trait. There were some awful things, awful things <laughs> that was attributed to to blacks over the over the history of this country. Uh, you know, all sorts of horrific uh, subhuman th- things and all sorts of stuff. If you is it the Scopes trial or whatever? What's the trial that, that we just the Scopes trial was the Darwin thing? Are oh, you thinking Dred Scott? Dred Scott, yes, exactly. That's what we talked about. Um, the Dred Scott thing, etc. There are all sorts of – you don't have to look far to see how um, uh, how low, lowly regarded many whites of history felt about the blacks were. Right. You know what I mean. Um, but saying that, you know what? They're fat. <laughs> I don't know that that's – I don't think that that's one. Actually fat. That was irrelevant. The message they spread was that black women specifically were ravenous and uncontrollable, and these barbaric traits made them fat. On the flip side, thinness was marketed as a white trait. Again, I must be looking at the wrong pictures, because there were some plump, plump white (laughs) folks in the last 300 years. Well, and I think actually, you know, wasn't, they didn't have our- Why ask me as if I'm the official liaison (laughs) to all fat history? Um- It's. (laughs) It's. <laughs> I assume you've studied fat studies in college. I don't know. <laughs> so, what, what I was going to say is, didn't That's people like in a lot of our history not have the same, you know, standards of beauty around weight? Like plumpness was like yes. considered wealthy My man and like taft, Alice. People didn't like people to be too skinny then, right? Like so. 
uh, how could that have been that they were and certainly not white women i think i mean you had to have um childbearing hips or whatever all that uh, stuff is right yeah i think so i mean uh, but you know what how what would i know i'm not on tiktok regardless of whether or not individual white people were actually thin that was irrelevant the idea was that oh i see hmm. okay White women specifically were refined and restrained, and this led them to having delicate, thin bodies. Over the years, these messages have become more subtle, but even today, they are still very prevalent in conversations around race, health, capitalism, and poverty. There's a lot of fat, poor people in the world, uh, Hannah, okay? And then there's fat, uh, middle-class people like yourself, okay? Then there's fat, uh, barely hanging on to the <laughs> upper end of lower class like me. Uh, so just we're shut at the up, ragged okay? edge of the middle class, like Liz Warren. God, it's, it's incredible. It's, you know what? If you're gonna lecture me on Twitter, lecture me about gender. Now I had a lot of confused people in these comments, which is the goal. Nothing that I do is ever supposed to make sense. However, le wow, aren't you interesting? That's deep. So many layers of this really interesting lecturer on TikTok. My goodness, I use um um I use hyperbole. <laughs> That's what that just was. Ha ha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you thought that was for real, but no. Wasn't meant to be taken literal. Now you're thoroughly, firmly in the trap. Don't you see? Let me explain this. So I go to- Don't explain it! <laughs> oh, I am shocked. Some 23-year-old moron on Twitter has something to explain to me. Let me explain this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain how I managed to capture you in uh, one fell swoop intellectually, as you fester in my uh, the my uh, my uh, my intellectual penitentiary. You've no <laughs> way out. So let me explain how all this happened to you. To a gender therapy specialist, she's great, and she's deep. No, she's not. <laughs> she's not great. She tells you what you want to hear mm -hmm. and bills your family. But she's not great. ...into academic Twitter. So she found this person's dissertation where they argued that being cis and straight is a trauma response. Which at first is just like, what do you mean? That doesn't make any sense. But if we think about the heteronormativity that is our society, and how in so many... <laughs> Isn't it interesting how the most uninteresting people now surround themselves with the most grandiose vocabulary mm -hmm. i think that's just your what do we have a pigmentocracy talking <laughs> many parts of our country especially like it is so 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 not okay to be trans or to be gay people aren't allowed to express or explore that side of their identity so they just kind of conform to society and don't even think about it. Like if you so many parts of the country, where it's not okay to be gay. There really, there is no parts left where you're not where it's not okay to be gay. There's nowhere. No, uh, no. It, it, there are many parts of the country where you can have the hell beat out of you for not thinking it's awesome that somebody's gay or trans. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Those. Those are all over the place. Like, gender and sexuality is such a broad spectrum. To only exist on one extreme of it doesn't make any sense. Especially if you're both extremes, you know? Like, it could happen, but... Mm. Yeah. This is funny to me, because it's like she's so close to seeing the light here. She's like, wow, with gender and sexuality both being such a huge spectrum, there's so many genders to be and so many sexualities to be. How is it that... There are so many people that are all, like, just on one end of the spectrum. That's strange. Like, maybe that should be a hint to you that it's not actually a freaking spectrum. Right? Like, right. Because if it were just a magical rainbow spectrum where people can be at any point on it, then we'd see a lot more, like, across planet Earth, not just in decadent late American Empire <laughs> times. But... Like, across all of human history, there would be, like, tons of acknowledged genders. And there aren't. There's only... There's... That's why everybody is turning out to be one extreme or the other is because it's not a spectrum. And same with sexuality, is that most people are not on a spectrum of sexuality. They're just one. Like, the, because that's that's the way most 
people are because it's not a spectrum. It's, you know, a, it's a distinct thing. You're it, with a few outliers or, you know, edge cases. There's not like a diverse range Alice, of thousands her, of genders. Her gender analyst who's effing awesome it disagrees mm-hmm. with you. Well, somebody's student dissertation thinks that <laughs> the reason why so many people all identify as just one of the two classical genders is that it's is that we're all traumatized by the patriarchy not that maybe there's just two genders that that's too easy an answer but it's so funny to me that she's like right there she's like what are the chances that on this beautiful magical spectrum with all these choices everybody would just be at one end it's so weird well yeah it would be weird that's why it's not a spectrum clearly Uh, maybe someday she'll See the light. I don't know. Very, very hateful of you, Alice, mm-hmm. as usual here. Uh, we have a little bit of this Stelter stuff. I don't love it. Do you love it? I'm fine. Yeah, For Stelter, it can't compete. Saying arrest Fauci, that just shows how fair criticism goes to an unfair extreme place. Totally. And, and it's one thing to criticize someone and, and have a, a, a debate that's fair. It's another thing to say, like you just played, you know, he has blood on his hands. We should arrest him. We should prosecute him. We should throw him in jail and throw away the so key. So, once again, it's just, it's just CNN talking about Fox News morning. They care. That's what they talk about now. It's Fox <laughs> yeah, News. They, that's all, all, the all they time. cover is Fox News. Let's see. Can I, can I disclose my new information, Alice? My big I don't news? know. That's, Jens, you have to ask I your cannot people. until there is a, uh, you know what? Until there's a press release, I'm looking right now and. We've. Uh, I'll just say that the press release should be out there soon, and when it is out there, when I get the green light, I will let you know that I've got some big news um, for me. It's not just Alice embarking on a new uh, media uh, adventure. Mm-hmm. I may be uh, doing something myself very shortly. Also, for the first time ever, I'll let you know. I'll definitely know tomorrow. I think pro- tomorrow you'll know, maybe before me, you'll see. Um. But um, we're also embarking on a road trip in a couple of days, which means Thursday will be a remote broadcast. We're going to have to mm-hmm. b- bring this baby on the road, Alice. There we'll might see. be some troubleshooting involved in Thursday's show, so but we'll, we will handle it. We'll get it up for you guys. We will handle it. <laughs> <laughs> You're very cute today, Alice. <laughs> Oh, no, you're very weird today. You're very know. weird today. <laughs> it's not true. I'm not weird. Yes, yes you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> but um, uh, let's see. I just want to make sure that I didn't forget anything because you know what's it's interesting, Alice, and I think that we ought to think about a way to make sure we don't miss things. Because sometimes on the off days, like the tube and stuff, we really didn't do together. Oh, what would we miss? Well, I video? need to plug in my computer because I somebody unplugged it. But I'm uh, moving your camera when I try. Oh, I don't care about my camera. Nobody wants to see me. I'm fine. Uh, shit. Oh, hey, don't swear. Sorry. My goodness, Alice. What the hell's happened to you? Sorry, now I'm is this, this a, camera is this, too. Is this cleavage-related behavior? <laughs> no. I've, I've gotten several messages. Maybe, maybe your behavior is cleavage-related. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, Alice. I don't know. I don't know. But um, but anyway, we'll have more uh, more. Um, about this tomorrow and uh more about alice's uh, horrific behavior we have this medi stuff saying that americans are terrible in wars talking about the icc the international criminal court in a 60 second rant start the clock republicans and some democrats lined up to slam ilhan omar this week because they said she equated the u.s and israel with the taliban and hamas she didn't she pointed out that the international criminal court is right to investigate potential war crimes by all of those parties and look americans get very upset when our nation is accused of war crimes but i'm sorry to break this to you our nation has done some pretty awful things abroad and we have to be able to talk about them take the korean war does the no gun knee massacre in 1950 in which u.s forces are accused of deliberately firing on and killing hundreds of refugees including kids not count as a war crime how about the bombing of civilians in vietnam Laos, Cambodia, the My Lai Massacre. What about Iraq? Was Abu Ghraib not a war crime? Uh, Abu Ghraib, to me, was a dog barking at people. But supposedly, if you read the thing, uh, there was a little well, bit more. But the but, thing is, we punish our own people. Yes, yes. And the same thing with the My Lai Massacre. It, it, people did jail time for that. But yes. And we, and here's so the, that's why we don't submit our stuff to let like China decide what r- right, but, how our troops should be punished for misbehavior. Right. So some would suggest, and maybe Mehdi Hassan is one of those guys, that, that you know, an international trial court is the only way to do it because you get leniency here. And the, the people in charge of the, the Milai Massacre, the guy did get out in the 70s, I think, the, the heavy mm-hmm. involved in that. 
Um, but here's my feeling on that is um, F you. Well, yeah. We're the big dog here, and we're not we're not playing your game. And it, 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 he said Americans don't like talking about that. Yeah, like we didn't talk about Abu Ghraib for about eight years straight. Give oh, yeah, we talked theme. about it plenty. There are always people, especially people like Mehdi Hassan and people on that uh, network who are happy to focus for hours and hours to talk about how wretched we are, mm -hmm. how vicious we are, how war crimey we are, and how uh, rapey we are, and how uh, slaveholdery we are constantly. That is what they do. Mm -hmm. They hate America. They talk about it constantly. Well, and it's ironic because if they lived in China or Russia, they wouldn't be allowed to do that. Right. Which is why we don't think those countries have any moral standing to tell us how we deal with criminal behavior. Like, right. that's, we don't, countries that jail journalists or opposition leaders are not countries that have the moral high ground here to tell us how we should be conducting war. Like, we try and handle our own stuff. We're not perfect. But, like, who who else is going to tell us? And, yeah, we're bigger and badder. So, like, yes, we, we get to tell them. We have a reckoning. Uh, in their, our culture and in our own courts. Mm -hmm. And because we have free speech, we do it in the media and in books constantly. We are not we are not shying away from flogging ourselves or exposing, you know, uh, craven, horrible behavior on, on, perhaps, uh, on behalf of the military. And by the way, you can mention My Lai Massacre, and you can... One of the reasons why these massacres stand out so much is that we do. Mm -hmm. We do punish our people. If you want to go through the uh, the annals of war history and look what happened here and have to, uh, and and talk about you know crimes against you know, crimes that have happened, the Japanese in World War Two were pretty mean to people they had as prisoners. Uh, yeah. Those were civilians, and you know the Germans were pretty mean, and the Russians were pretty mean to the Germans after the war war when they went through and raped everybody in Europe in 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 Berlin, and there's. This is a big story we're telling here, Mehdi, okay? Yeah. It's a big story. And uh, certainly, it's you know, I met, I met a guy once, a World War II guy, who, when I first got into radio, who's, I was listening to the Iraq war coverage, actually. Mm -hmm. I said, it's terrible that they're killing, I think the, the, the story was that the Iraqis were killing American prisoners. Okay. I said, that's incredible, terrible, 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 whatever. And I said, and he said... That's what happens in war, this old codger said to me. He said, that's what happens in war. That's what happens in war. And I said, but it's, but it's terrible. He said, <clears throat> terrible. Look up right now with your computer the Malmody Massacre. The Malmody Massacre is towards the end of World War II. The, the uh, Germans took a bunch of Americans, uh, like um, Americans, like field engineers, guys who made the the engineer corps, who made mm -hmm. the bridges, etc., and lined them up in the field and shot them dead, executed them towards the end of the war. And I said, I looked it up and I said, oh my God, this is terrible. I never knew about that. I had never known. I was, you know, I, just never... mm -hmm. I said, that's terrible. That's terrible. And he looked at me and he said, oh, yeah, that's terrible. But believe me, we got them back. And they did. Americans found a bunch of Germans and they blew them away. And this is like this whole world of taking snapshots of war and saying, you know what? We really must <coughs> focus on the My Lai Massacre and focus on Abu Ghraib, which was not, can't compare to the rest of these things mm -hmm. that are happening it's a ugly confusing and complicated subject and i know the lust to if you're somebody like this guy the lust to uh, denigrate your country and try to cast it as sort of some sort of oppressive uh source of some menace historically mm -hmm. is too good of a salve and i know it feels it feels like a great validation to hate your country etc but you're being a shallow short-sighted dumbass if you embrace the idea that this country is uniquely bad yeah, it is far from uniquely bad. <sighs> Off to work, Alice? Uh, yes, work tonight, indeed. Is that going to last forever, or is that going to come to an end? I think it's going to come to an end probably soon. Oh, goodness, Alice. I kind of mm -hmm. like the idea. You look cute in your warehouse say, attire. Thank you. But I think uh, we're getting close to the end. You look cute tonight, too. i got to tell you. I think we're going to get you. some, uh, some um, comments on it, Alice. Okay. Uh, have a good night, everybody. We are 
burnbarrelpodcast.com. We are also on Twitter at burnbarrelpod, facebook.com slash burnbarrelpodcast. We are on YouTube, Tom Shaddock's Burn Barrel. You can search on YouTube and find us there. Or shoot us an email that is burnbarrelpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can find some extra content and things at burnbarrel.locals.com and patreon.com slash burnbarrel if you are so inclined. Thank you so much, everybody. 